John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we another exciting episode for him here in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm at a cool place today. And no, it's not a farm you can see behind me. They're not like really growing stuff here. Well, actually, they are growing something here. They're growing worms and making worm castings an essential element for you guys' farm or home garden. So I'm here today to share with you guys what they're doing. And they're doing something amazing that every municipality, every city, every state, everywhere in the country should be doing what they're doing here in this yard on uh, West 48th Street here in Chicago. And uh, they're turning food scraps and things from the waste stream that would normally get put into the landfill, rot, create methane gas, and really not serve you know, the purpose of, of feeding the the earth back it just rots and it is just a waste when things have to go to the landfill so I'm really glad that they're diverting uh, food waste here and what they get delivered here in uh, you know big sacks that are all delivered actually by bicycle which is uh, super cool the sacks have things like uh, coffee uh, you know bean residuals after they press out the coffee and then they also have things like uh, food scraps and some of the plastic bags there that they get from different uh, farms and grocery stores and restaurants and then over on this side they got a bunch of five gallon buckets and the five gallon buckets they collect from different you know people well they don't actually collect them uh, they have haulers that collect them and then they drop them off here and uh, people basically put uh, their food waste in there then they come here and then they get composted or not necessarily composted the worms eat them well actually the worms don't even eat them well you'll learn more about that in a minute and they basically give that, they feed it to the worms and then they make, uh, you know, the worms have babies because they're nice and happy. And then the worms also make the worm castings, which are the one of the best nutrients that you guys should be adding to your garden. And you guys should definitely be having your own worms in the garden to make castings right there in your garden bed. So you don't have to keep adding the castings. I mean, my garden beds, you just actually add a few worms in the beginning and provided you have a good system and you're not you know putting chemical fertilizers and all this crap to kill your worms and if you give them enough water and food source which is like compost worms love to eat compost or food scraps um they're gonna multiply so then at some point like you're gonna dig in your soil like i do and you're gonna feel bad oh my god i just cut a worm up in half when i'm planting my transplants because there's so many worms in there right that's a good problem to have to have an overabundance of worms and worm eggs and all this kind of stuff but I know a lot of you guys are new gardeners, so you guys gotta get a start somewhere. So, you know, the place you should start is maybe even order some worms from uh, Nature's Little Recyclers. And we're gonna go ahead and go into their yard today and show you guys the process that it goes through uh, from food to worm to how they grow them indoors year round here in Chicago, even when there's snow on the ground outside in the wintertime and how they grow even in the uh, summertime, they grow indoors and also outside in the summer they convert uh, you know because it can't get too hot in the building for the worms they get over the right temperature uh, they grow outside so yeah let's go ahead and take you on this journey of how they actually grow worms and worm castings here at nature's little recyclers all right so they got this big huge fence and let's see if i can open this up oh i gotta pull all right come on inside so the first thing i've learned about having a worm farm that's really cool is that all your feed stock what you're feeding your worms are free or can be free because it's unfortunate that some worm farms use prena worm chow to feed their worms which i think is a travesty it's a waste that stuff should not even be sold because there's so many things going to the landfill that they're rescuing that you could feed your worms for free without having to buy worm chow to feed your worms and make purina a rich company <laughs> anyways and i don't advocate you guys eating any kind of processed foods whether that's for your worms uh you know for your pets purina dog foods or processed foods for you and I want you guys to eat real foods like they're feeding the worms. Now, I don't know that I'd necessarily, you know, eat, eat this stuff right here, the coffee grounds. Maybe if I was starving, there's probably some nutrients in there. It actually smells quite good. But they get things like coffee grounds. And, you know, in these bags here, I don't know what they got. Let's see. Oh, and they use these uh, biodegradable uh, plastic bags. Oh, they got some eggshells in here. And they got all these these uh, shreds and uh, or these uh, little uh, sticks here on whatever, these stems. <laughs> This looks like their stems off like collard greens or kale. Maybe there's a kale chip factory that's uh, stripping these and then using them to cook with and they strip these off and then they come here to feed the worms. So, you know, the feedstock is free. They don't have to keep buying it. So this is super intelligent. Actually, one of the owners here started selling worms when I think he was a teenager and he, he picked up a book, you know, start a worm farm to make money or something like that, right? And you guys could do this too. Start one of these up if you guys, wherever you guys live in the world, except in Chicago because they're doing it here. No, wait, if you're in Chicago, do it too because guess what? 
There's so much extra trash and waste going to the landfill. These are needed like multiple companies like this in every single city around the country so that we could take things like coffee grounds and food scraps out of the whole landfill system. And then guess what? You get free inputs to uh, feed the worms. And then guess what? You get to you get to grow the worms, sell the worms. You can sell the worm eggs. You can also sell their castings, or better yet, use them for your own garden or farm. And you can set this up as a side business, right? So yeah, really cool. So this is just one of the feed sources they get from more industrial suppliers like coffee, you know, by the big huge bag, the grounds and all the food scraps. But they also, uh, you know, work with some local delivery companies that actually will pick up the compost from people and then they deliver that here. So let me go, let me go ahead and show you guys uh, some of that food stock they get for the worms uh, in the five gallon buckets over yonder. All right, so now I'm sitting amongst all these five gallon buckets. Five gallon buckets are a great resource that unfortunately also go to the landfill. You know, check with local delis or bakeries. They get a lot of goods shipped in these buckets to the, you know, to the delis, whether that's pickles or olives or to the bakeries, whether that's like some kind of crazy nasty whipped cream and all these frostings that I don't recommend you guys eat or fruit compote fillings with like all kinds of artificial stuff in there. And I'll tell you, I got some buckets from the, the bakery and I had to wash them out and man that stuff didn't wash out and it's like man people eat this stuff and, and I could barely get it washed out just in my shower like with just water like it just wouldn't dissolve like what happens when you eat that stuff I don't even want to know but anyways they got a lot of buckets here and in their buckets uh, basically uh, once again they got the biodegradable bags and they just collect these from uh, households and people and they got all kinds of different stuff in here actually open this up it smells kind of like it's been fermenting a little bit and inside here we got a you know piece of carrot hey man these are good piece of carrots man they should have juiced these i don't know why they're throwing them out feed them the worms and they looks like they got pieces of onions in there i mean every one is a little bit different they might have lemons and some let's see what's in this side oh look at this they got cilantro in there oh they shouldn't have this little uh, tag on there no this is italian parsley sorry that's that's pretty much well used <laughs> oh they got celery in here they got some celery. This might have been good celery, but right now, this is good worm food, right? And check it out. In nature, there's no such thing as waste. I challenge you to challenge me on that. Find some waste in nature. If it's not made by man, if it's not made out of plastic, right? Everything is biodegradable and is returned to the earth, even us, right? And I want you guys to think about this and, and do more to return the things that you use on your farm or in your garden and return it to the earth or feed it to the worms. And check this out. You know, even man-made polystyrene or whatever that stuff is, uh, that foam packing material, right? They found out that uh, mealworms can even digest that stuff, right? Nature is incredible. It's only when we get involved and start like, you know, making plastics and doing all these things that are ne not necessarily directly out of nature, do we create waste? So I want you guys to, you know, focus on using more natural products in your lives, whether that's in your garden or especially in your home, and, and try to shy away from plastics. I know we can't get away from plastics completely because plastics make it possible, and but they could serve us in a useful way where we're reusing buckets, you know, and reusing and reusing them. I mean, I use them to collect compost in my personal kitchen that I take out to my compost tumblers, right? And I and I collect, you know, I harvest things into the buckets, right? I I cut down my plants and I put those in the bucket to take to my composters. There's so many uses of the five gallon buckets and I want to encourage you guys to get some, you know, and divert them from the landfill and use them and reuse them in your garden until they bust up in the UV sun after a couple years, right? I have a really good video actually. It's one of my favorite videos I made, believe it or not. I made it like five, six years ago. The many uses of a five gallon bucket. I'll put a link down below if I remember that. Check that out. I definitely had a fun time making it. And even in this day, I remember that video. It's one of my all time favorites. So yeah, check it out. Anyways, as you guys can see, they got like so much food to feed the worms. I don't know, they got some like backlog here. So anyways, let's go ahead in next and uh, show you guys how they grow the worms or actually how they used to grow the worms, how they're growing the worms now and uh, about the whole process. Let's go ahead and share it with you inside uh, their uh, worm farm inside the building. So now we're inside the building of nature's little recyclers and in the winter, spring and fall, this is the perfect environment to be growing worms. They're not growing food, they're growing worms. Well, it might be food for some uh, different fish and creatures that like to eat worms, birds, they love worms, but they're growing the worms in here. And you know, 
you got to have the right temperature, the right moisture level, and they're experts in knowing all this stuff because they've been doing it for a long time. And uh, how it is is it's not even expensive to keep worms. What they're using is these plastic totes. Now these have definitely been around the block or two <laughs> a few times, and uh, you know they put some holes in there for some uh, aeration and uh, you know some drainage so that it's not too moist in there for the worms. And they just basically put all the different inputs that you guys saw into these bins, and then they put worms in there, and the worms eat the garbage or the food scraps and all their uh, input materials that they're getting for free. Now here's the thing that you probably never heard before, right? Uh, the worms don't really eat the food. You're saying, what John, how does that work? You put the food in there, the worms eat it, it comes out their rear end, they make some you know, uh, worm castings. That's not exactly it. I mean, we might eat food and you might think we digest it and then it comes out our other end, but believe it or not, inside us, we have beneficial microbes or our microbiome, things like lactobacillus, and other uh, beneficial bacteria. And they help us digest our food, right? Much like the worms. The worms don't really digest it. They don't got no teeth to even break up stuff. They eat the food uh, part. They don't even eat the food particles. The bacteria are breaking down the food uh, particles and then the worms eat all that stuff, right? And in the worm's gut, they could actually digest, the wor inside the worm's gut, they digest, the, uh, the bacteria digest the food particles and the worms absorb that. So yeah, the worms don't directly eat it. They have a whole host of microbiome that help them do that. And check this out, just like in our poop, when we poop, right? Our poop, when we poop it out, it's mostly bacteria. And when the worms make the worm castings, it's also mostly bacteria and other uh, beneficial organisms, right? These are the very organisms that are gonna help, you know, bring and create more fertility to your soil by adding, uh, you know, a whole host of different organisms that are going to go into your soil and actually uh, break down the organic matter in your soil and make that available for the plants. And that's the reason why worm castings are so important. Now this is the first way they were doing this. At one time they had like 500 of these bins. And you guys can get one of these bins at Home Depot or Walmart and keep your own worms. It's super simple, super easy. I'm not going to get into how to do that specifically. There's plenty of YouTube videos on doing that. But you guys can easily do that. But they had some challenges with it, uh, you know, doing it this way in a large commercial system. So they've gone to something even better than this. So let me go ahead and show you guys uh, that next. So the new container they're using to grow their worms are these guys. They're actually called Max Crates or something like that. And basically, if you ever go to the, you know, to buy apples at your grocery store, you might see one of these guys with like all the apples or all the watermelons in there, right? They buy these brand new, and they also get some that are being, uh, you know, reused from the recycling industry when these no longer have a good purpose or life in whatever they're used for in, begin in the beginning. And they just simply take these and because they're a lot larger, you know, they don't need to have as many. Plus these are stackable. They could stack these up to 10 high. They usually stack them maybe like three high. And they've modified this and made it even better than just what it is. Basically what they did, they took a, they took a drill and they drilled some holes on here. They drilled some drainage in here and they put some holes on the side and they put some PVC that runs all the way through the crate. And uh, what it does is they uh, perforate it. So they put holes in the PVC tube. So this adds extra aeration into, uh, you know, uh, in into the bin there. So the worms could have a little bit more aeration. But it's also important for the first step of feeding the worms. So they don't just instantly take one of these guys with all the tubes and stuff and uh, put all the food scraps in there and then put the worms in. No, no, no. They have to go through a thermophilic step first, you know, uh, according to the, uh, I guess, the law. And also, you know, it prevents pathogens. And also, the other thing it does, it breaks down uh, some of the matter and starts it composting and creates more bacteria and uh, breaks open the cell walls uh, for the worms. So then it actually makes a better worm food, right, for them. So they actually, they just fill this up with their mixtures that they're getting outside, including this stuff in this bag here, which is actually called coffee bean shaft and they mix up an appropriate mixer, including some cardboard and whatnot. And so they have like a really varied food source. They mix it up and then basically they let this uh, thermophilic compost or compost for a few days or a couple weeks or whatever. And they hook up actually uh, blowers to these pipes and then they blow air through there. So this encourages the compost to happen faster. Once they got it up to a hot temperature and it cools down, then and only then will they actually put the worms in there. So now the compost is broken down a little bit and the worms really go to town and uh, like it a lot more than just the raw food scraps, right? And then they feed the worms 
and then uh, and then after that they harvest it, right? And that's it's like how simple this system is to make. And then you know if you have a you know appropriate levels of a uh, water, which they only maybe water once a month, uh, depending if they have wet food scraps, they don't even need to add water to this system. Um, they they have a mix mixture of different things, and it's just super sustainable when they're getting free feedstock to feed their worms, right? Most gardens or whatever, you know, maybe you're making your own compost and stuff, but all people may bring in inputs from the outside, right? This is super intelligent because it diverts waste that would be normally going to the landfill. I guess the next step that I want to show you guys is once they got all this, they sift this stuff out to make the worm castings that they sell to gardeners all over the country. Also, can people can pick up in the local area. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and show you guys how they sift out this stuff after it's been in there for a good long time and the worms have digested. So the next thing I want to share with you guys is actually how they stack those bins. You guys can see they got these bins stacked up three tall. The top two bins actually have the worms and then the bottom bin collects all the leachate or that is the liquid that runs off and out of these bins. So uh, you know some people might call that worm tea but that's not worm tea. Let's not get the you know um, uh, terminology confused. That's basically the leachate or the worm pee, right? Worm pee, worm tea, they rhyme, but they're not the same thing. You know, this is different than the uh, aerated worm compost tea that I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, this stuff, it, it may be good for your garden. Some gardeners say it's not good for your garden. My personal opinion on the leachate is you want to take the leachate, you want to dilute it down, and yes. Add it back to the soil. It's just a yet another way to get organic matter and further nutrients back into the soil. That's one of the best ways you guys could use the leachate. But whatever you do, don't call it a compost tea because in my opinion, it's not. So once the worms eat the food, you know, and go through the whole bedding material, uh, they take the bedding material and then they put it into this device right here, which is a sifter or sorter. And I'm gonna actually demonstrate it right here. Uh, they're gonna basically put the stuff like right here and then throw it in there. Oh, and there's worms, I see worms crawling around. <laughs> and then what happens is they press this button on the back. And what this, what's happening now is this thing shakes and there's two sections of this. This first section uh, has small holes so this catches all the uh, worm castings that then they ship out to people around the country. Then as it goes down, you can move it down. And then over in this area, what happens is they have larger holes. So this area is a design to catch all the worm eggs, which they use in-house to keep their breeding stock up so they can hatch more babies uh, to sell to you guys. And then the final section, the big chunks just fall out the front, which then they rotate back in and refeed the worms. That's pretty much how simple it is to you know sort out all the worm cats that they have a specially designed screen that does it all for them. Let's go ahead and turn this guy off. I think I need one of these guys to sift all my compost. Maybe I'd have like a little bit bigger holes than what they got here. But this thing's really cool. Uh, next, what I want to show you guys is after they sift this stuff out, they have the casting, they have the big stuff, the big stuff they throw back in. But then what they're going to do is also uh, pick out and select the worms that get shipped out to you guys. So let's go over to the area they have set up where they actually, uh, you know, uh, select out and ship worms. So after they sift out the worms and the castings that you guys saw, they were left with a few things, right? They're left with this right here, which is 100% uh, mostly pure worm castings, which is basically the worm poop. This stuff is rich and biologically active. And the main reason why I like these worm castings compared to many other ones is because what they're feeding the worms, right? We are only as healthy as the food we eat. Your dog is only as, a, as healthy as the food he eats. And the worms are only as healthy and the castings are only as good as the food they're eating. So, you know, I don't necessarily like, you know, worms that are being fed like puna worm chow or, you know, uh, manure or GMO corn or any kind of these things. I like what they're using here. They're using a wide variety of fruit and vegetable scraps and cardboard, coffee grounds. And actually, you know, they get eggshells in and even like, uh, you know, bones and all these crazy things. Mixed, diverse food source. This is what we want for us. We want to eat a diversity as, as good as kale is. Don't just eat kale all day. You want to eat kale, collards, spinach, lettuce, arugula, you know, radicchio, ashitaba, genera procumbens, or longevity spinach. You want to eat all the different things and have a diverse diet. And that's what they're really doing to their worms here. And that's why I like these castings. These are a really nice casting. And when you get a casting, 
you should be able to smell it and it shouldn't smell bad if your cats didn't smell bad then you got some big problems they should they should have a neutral smell and they should just look nice rich dark and black just like these ones right here so you know uh they're left with the castings like one bucket of these guys which are worth their weight in gold for your garden and then they're left with a bunch more of the of the larger material that you know they, they feed in and uh, feed back into their worms so once they get the finished worm castings, they could actually ship out the worm castings to you or they could create a value added product with their worm castings that I would also encourage you guys to do with your, your worm castings. What they do is they got this big huge Vortex Brewer here and they make compost tea out of it or you know uh, casting tea, right? This is not the same as the leachate or the liquid that comes out of the worm bins, right? This is totally different because this is uh, aerobic. They bubble this up and they brew it up and the bacteria multiplies. They sell, then sell this in the local area and use it on the farms that they work with to help you know, reestablish bacterial and fungal colonies in the soil so that the soil can be more productive. And you guys could do this too, but the problem with uh, the uh, compost tea is that you gotta use it or lose it. So you wanna usually bubble it for about uh, 24 hours and then you wanna spread it out immediately you don't want to let it sit because the the colony counts will actually go down if you uh, don't bubble it enough or if you bubble it too long be sure to click a link down below if i remember to put the link in the video down below to an open source compost tea recipe that uses you know predominantly worm castings as one of the sources to uh, increase the biological activity of your garden so now what i want to do is i want to show with you guys actually how they screen out the worms and select them to ship to you it's a very intelligent process you know a lot of worm uh, sellers may just use like a rotating tumbler that sorts out the worms and when you do that you might get damaged worms and you know when you get the box you open it up it kind of smells funky that's because some of the worms didn't make it and their bodies are decomposing and it's like it's gross right so i'm glad that they actually hand select and ship out the worms to you and check out how they do this this is super smart right they're using nature uh you know or worms natural tendencies to our their advantage so that they could harvest them they basically got these heat lamps. It's actually quite hot. I'm glad I don't work in here eight hours a day sorting worms. <laughs> but what they do is they uh, heat up the top of the soil. So what's this like? This is like the sun coming down and hitting the earth. And when that happens, the worms don't want to be out in the sun. They don't like sunbathing like all these ladies in Hawaii and stuff, right? They want to be under the ground where it's like nice and cool and they're collected you know and chill out underneath the ground they don't want to be in the sun because they will dry up right and yeah we've all seen those shriveled up worms and it's sad when you see shriveled up worms right so what happens is the worms have a natural tendency when it's hot on the surface of the soil uh, they're going to burrow down so then all the worms burrow to the to, to the bottom and then they just basically scoop out the stuff on the top scoop it to the side and then they harvest the stuff on the bottom and the, oh wow, look at this, man. This is where all the worms are. Look at that. There's like tons of worms here. I don't know if you guys can see them in the bottom there. And uh, this is what then they uh, put in the bags to ship to you guys. And, uh, and how they pack it is really cool because, you know, unlike a lot of places that use a lot of plastic, you know, they try to do things as sustainable and renewable as possible. And everything they ship you except for the plastic tape that's coming on the box you can compost or you could feed back to your worms including the cardboard that should be shredded they actually inside the box they use a you know a newspaper from the local area we're using that as a you know packing material inside here they have a, a paper bag that helps keep some of the moisture in for the worms and as a second barrier in case some of the worms get out of uh, what's inside here and they basically uh, ship it in this little cloth bag that they have tied off. All this is made out of cotton. This is all compostable. And so the worms could breathe. Now the other thing they do that's super intelligent, they actually add some peat moss uh, you know, in here so it keeps a, a more stable environment for the worms so that you're insured you're gonna get live worms. And they only ship a few times a week um, you know, to ensure that you're gonna get the freshest, most alive worms you know, without ones that are not alive, that have croaked during the shipment. So this is really cool. They're shipping it in this way. And yeah, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, actually, they showed me a worm egg. So let me see if I can find it over here, man. Oh yeah, all right. The worm egg, here's the worm egg right here, man. It's so small and tiny. Oh, it's falling down, I'm losing it. All right, so here's the worm egg. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, but I got an HD camera now, but here's the little worm egg. I don't know if you guys can see that there. So tall, small and tiny, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it looks like a little seed, it's kind of clear. 
and this will hatch a bunch of the worms. So, you know, some places may sell worm eggs. They uh, keep them here to use and sell locally. They don't ship them out. And then they use that to repopulate their stores of worms so that they could have even a larger army to break down all the food scraps so they could make more worms to sell and, uh, you know, more worm castings to get out to you guys. So, yeah, really cool. And, you know, worms work in nature naturally. So, you know, you don't have to grow worms in these big bins. You don't have to, like, you know, sort out your worms, right? You could avoid all this by just putting live worms in your garden. And if you have like 20 garden beds, right? You want to order like a pound of worms and let, divide them into 20 portions and put a few worms in each garden bed, right? And if you provide the worms a good home, a good environment, you have a nice moisture level, you have good organic matter in there, they're going to be happy. They're going to eat all the food scraps and or all the compost and all the un, fully, you know, degraded stuff in there and create more fertility, add fertility to your soil, and you're not even doing any work to add this fertility. The worms are doing all the work, and this is how nature works, right? You guys got to get some worms if you've never added worms to your garden. I mean, one of the things I do is I, you know, I put worm, you know, eggs into my garden. I've added worms to my garden. When I see one of my raised beds may have like a lot of worms, and some beds don't have worms, I'll like move them to different beds. And when I dig up to uh, plant the plant start and I find a worm, I'm like, oh. Where am I going to put you? I'm going to put you over here because I don't see too many worms in that bed, right? So we want to get an even distribution of worms in all our different raised beds so they can start working for us. They're free labor. And free labor is the labor that I like the most, right? When I have workers working for me, including the bacteria, the fungi, the worms that help cultivate these things for your garden. All right, so what we're going to do next is actually we're going to go ahead and talk to Dale Hubbard, the CEO here. And uh, he's going to share with you guys a lot more about worms that you and I actually never heard of. So now I'm here with Dale, the CEO of Nature's Little Recyclers. And you never guess by looking at this guy with his uh, dirty hands <laughs> <laughs> that he's the CEO, but he keeps his whole business running. And you know, I'm, I'm glad that he's just a, a guy like one of us, right? He's not in some big huffy business suit sitting in some office doing crap and getting paid a lot of money. He actually probably works hard for his money <laughs> by, by the looks of it. But anyways, we're here to ask him a few questions today on you know why it's important that his business is here operating and why they even got started and a whole bunch of other things about worms that you guys probably never heard anywhere else. So, Dale, the first question I have for you is, why did you guys start this business? Because it's you and your, your partner, Ed, right? Yep. So the number one reason why we started this business was um, he wanted to grow, actually my partner wanted to grow earthworms. He's like looking for another thing to do in life. He's like, I think I'm gonna grow earthworms. And at first I thought he was crazy. I was like, no way you're growing earthworms. This is crazy, I'm not helping you. And then he got in a space called The Plant Chicago, which is an indoor vertical farm. And he started uh, processing all their waste and producing compost. And then I started meeting all the farmers and everybody. And I realized that in Chicago, the one reason we don't have more farms is here is because the soil's so bad. It's full of mercury and lead. And in order to produce uh, good, healthy, organic, uh, food, we need to build up the soil two feet. And so we figured by taking the trash or compost and feed it to our worms, we get high grade uh, fertilizer for it. That's awesome. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about this mercury and lead. I mean, this is why I encourage you guys to grow in raised beds instead of growing in the ground, especially if you guys are in a big city. You want to bring in some stuff, and the worm casting should be a big part of that. You know, I think I was over at your other facility because this is their indoor facility, their outdoor facility. You know, you guys are using wood chips in addition to the food scraps and the waste and the worms to break that down. So what are you guys doing over there so that the farmer could be successful growing there? And Because you help out that farm as well as other farms and community gardens and things in the area, right? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the big things we do is we work with other uh Farm, the development projects to get the farms off the ground and over there what we're doing is we're converting a parking lot I think it's a half acre lot and we're changing it into uh, high gr growable food so next by next this time next year there's gonna be an organic farm there that's awesome that's awesome so uh, you know um, let's talk about like diverting the food waste as you guys can see behind us we got the bags we got all the buckets full of waste that they have yet to process or well they have the process by throwing it into the bins and then the worms have to process it but let's talk about you know why it's so important to divert all this waste that would normally go to the landfill. So yeah, the number one thing that's produced in the landfills is methane. And what's causing it is this food waste. What happens is the food waste gets trapped in the landfill and loses oxygen and therefore goes anaerobic and produces methane. Uh, it's the number one producer of methane. Um, everybody gives the cows a bad reps, but they're actually number two. And so by processing it this way, there's no methane produced. And in fact, it not only gets, stops methane from being, for getting produced, it also sequesters carbon dioxide in the process. So it reverses both effects of uh, the most dangerous gases in global warming. Wow. So yeah, all you guys, if you guys are still throwing out your food waste, minimally compost them, or better yet, like they're doing here, feed them to worms. And if you guys are looking for a second job or a new you know, thing to get into, aside because you hate your job, right? 
You can work with worms all day and start a worm business. Get these casts and get these worms out to people, your local community, and, and ship them all over. We need more of the businesses like this, and that's why I'm here uh, sharing uh, with you guys uh, them today. So the next question is, let's talk about the worms. So, you, you know, uh, Dale told me that the worms actually don't eat the food. So what's up with this? I see the, you put the food in there and the food doesn't, it disappears, but the worms are not eating it. What's going on? So actually worms are, uh, it's not just the worms, they're actually a whole microbial process that comes with the worms. What they do is they create enzymes and microbes that break down the food for the worms. And then when the food becomes soft and almost uh, liquefied, then the worms go through and eat it all. So Dale, the next question I have for you is actually, uh, you know, what percentage, because you're using, you're going through a lot of food scraps and food waste here, but I know you're not getting it all what percentage are you saving and what percentage is still going you know to the landfill so actually we only save a fraction of a uh, compost of what's produced in Chicago we out of all of Chicago of all the composting programs only 2% of stuff is actually uh, diverted from the landfill the other 98% still goes to the landfill and that's pretty much across the truth that's true across the country so almost all the stuff is still going to landfill so we need lots of people to compost so we need a lot more worm farmers a lot more composters to get it done yeah it's a great a great business to have right so uh, let's talk about that, like let's talk about shipping the worms and shipping the worm castings to people all over the country, yeah. right? Uh, why did you guys decide to like, you know, uh, sell them and ship them instead of just sell them in the local area? So the number one reason we decided to sh uh, ship them was uh, ease of the internet, right? We, we could ship to the whole country, you know, which is a click of a button versus locally it was hard to get our name out and stuff. So we started selling on uh, national sites like Amazon, off our own website, which allowed us to um, get a lot of early sales on it and promote our brand tremendously. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm here because I actually found them on the webs on the internet, uh, found their website, found their prices. Actually, their prices on uh, delivered worms are like the lowest prices I found, and we'll talk more about that and give you guys a special deal at the end. Uh, but yeah, they have amazing uh, prices on the worms. And they also sell the castings, and these are so beneficial to you guys' garden. So, Dale, what what's some of the reasons why worms and the worm castings are beneficial for people in their garden, and why should they use them? Sure. Well, the number so it's an organic fertilizer. It has uh, a lot of nutrients and micronutrients that you won't get from normal fertil or normal uh, soil. They also are help help with pest control, um, and they increase the water retention of your soil. So they a lot of the farmers call it in the industry black gold. Yeah, black gold. So let's talk about the word humus, right? You know that word, and why why is the worm casting one of the best humuses out there? So humus allows. Uh, air to get into the soil so you kind of break it up soil one of the problems one of the reasons we use uh, on one of our projects we use worm castings is because it's an old farmland that's compacted it had been uh, traditionally conventionally farmed for decades and all those soil became compacted out on the edge of the city so we're using worm castings to put air and humus back into it in order to uh, allow it to start growing organically again that's awesome yeah I mean worm castings they're an essential part of my gardening style and I want them to be a part of yours also the best way, of course, is to have your own worms in your raised beds or have your own worm box if you want to do a worm box or a worm bin like you guys saw a little bit earlier. And to get started, you'll need the worms. And that's where uh, Dale could help you out. So uh, you guys saw the process, how they pick out the worms, ship you guys the worms, and you could buy the worms and then uh, put them into your garden. So Dale, when somebody buys the worms and they get them shipped to you, right when they get the box, what the, what should they do? Should they leave the box sitting there for a week before they get to them or, or where do they put them once they get them? So the first thing we always say to open up the box right away to make sure the worms are in good condition. Um, the number one thing you need to do is moisture. The number one, that's the biggest thing you need to do. They can sit in the container for up to two weeks as long as you add moisture to the system, uh, to the container. But otherwise, we recommend feeding it right away to your bin as fast as you can. It'll be the best thing for the worms. Yeah, so, uh, you know, set up your own worm bin to put them in there to get them growing. Or just simply, like I mentioned, you know, put them into your garden beds. You know, take a little bit and put them in every garden bed provided you have a good soil mixer with high organic matter and you, you have the right water, that's where they're supposed to live. Worms are supposed to live in the soil, not necessarily in a bin like they're doing here, but this allows them to grow and propagate and get those out to more people. And as they're doing, diverting the food waste, one of the most important things you guys could do. Uh, so because you know I, I visited them and I like their stuff, I also negotiated with Dale, the CEO of the company, a good discount for you guys. So we're gonna get you guys a 10% discount on any of the products on their website. Uh, so you're going to want to order from them. I definitely can approve of their castings that I saw and handled personally, as well as their worms. They look like they got some real nice ones. So you guys are going to get not only the lowest price that they have without my discount, you're going to get my discount too. So you're not, you're probably not going to find a lower price online if you're going to want to buy, you know, a pack of worms. So Dale, how many, how many worms come in a pack? So a pound of worms usually contains a, a thousand, about a thousand worms in it, a little bit more than a thousand worms in it. 
Um, and that's usually what's a good thing to start like a five gallon bin or your, your at home garden. Oh, and John, I got a gift for you. There you go. Oh, cool, man. Check it out. He's giving me my own package of worms in the paper bag like they would come ship to you and in the cloth bag inside here with all the bedding material, just like you guys are going to be able to order. And I'm going to take this back on the airplane tonight when I fly back to El, uh, uh, Vegas. And I'm sure the T TSA is going to have fun <laughs> stopping me. What do you got in that bag? And I'm going to say, I got worms. <laughs> you want some? <laughs> so yeah, so now you guys could order the same ones I'm getting. You could also order their casting. So uh, Dale, if somebody wants to learn more about uh, you guys and your company and what you guys are doing or want to reach out to you, if they want to start one of these, you know, wherever they live, how can they get a hold of you? So the easiest way to get a hold of us is uh, nlrworms.com is our website. nlrworms is also our social media, Facebook, Twitter, all of it. Um, so that'd be the easiest way to contact us. Cool, and they also have a cool YouTube channel that I checked out that probably doesn't have a lot of views, but maybe it'll get more views after you guys see this video today. So uh, yeah, any other uh, last comments or the things you'd like to share with my viewers today about the worms, about the worm composting, about diverting the food waste or anything that we talked about? Uh, we say we produce the best worms. We gave it 100% guarantee on all our products. So if you're unhappy, we we'll, you can take it back. And all this money that gets used gets help to making the world a better place. That's awesome, man. That's why I make these videos so the world could be a better place through the education work that I'm able to do to, to you know, highlight companies like Dale's here and Ed's that, you know, are doing good in the world. And this is how we're going to create a better world by, by showing what good people are doing to create solutions in the world instead of creating more problems. They're creating a solution for the food waste and instead of creating problems by, you know, processing petroleum and fracking, creating more problems. Let's create solutions in our world. One of the ways you guys could easily do that is to start composting, uh, start worm composting, and of course, start growing your own food so you can become a producer instead of, our, instead of a consumer in our, unfortunately, consumers and society that we lead in. And it's not all gonna happen overnight, right? You can start growing a small portion of your food and every little bit helps. Every bit of food scraps you don't put into the, to the landfill is helping out the world. It's gonna also help build your garden too. So I encourage you guys to do that today. If you want to learn how, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. I have videos coming out every three to four days educating you guys on all ranges of subjects so that you guys could you know, grow more food at home. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 1,100 episodes online sharing with you guys all the knowledge you'll need to grow your own food, compost, make worm compost, make regular compost, whatever you guys want to do. And also, be sure to like this video if you guys like this video. If I get enough likes, I'm already going to come back on my next trip and we're going to get more into detail on how they do their process because this was just a general overview video. Also, be sure to check that link down below to go to their website uh, to get the special deal on the worms and don't forget the coupon code GYG. You're not going to get that anywhere else. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Colo with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and where I am in the world today is Miami, Florida area, and we're here at the Fairchild Tropical Botanical Gardens.